Parents of an 18 year old girl in Colorado file a lawsuit after their daughter goes into a coma after yeah. having a breast enhancement surgery. Fox 5 legal analyst Wendy Patrick joining us now to explain. Wendy, good morning. Good morning. Okay, for those not familiar with this case, give us a little background on what happened. This is a just a heartbreaking case and it involves a young lady who went through a procedure or at least showed up to have a procedure that many of her family and friends had had and that's breast augmentation. And the problem here apparently was that you know, despite the risks of such surgery, the anesthesia, as in so many other cases, yeah. often presents the biggest risk. And that's apparently what happened here. According to the lawsuit, she was left uh, basically unmonitored for 15 minutes. And of course, during that time, there were several cardiac arrests. The end result was oh. brain damage that left her permanently at least, well, let me put that word in uh, air quotes because I am hopeful that it's not permanent. We all hope for a Christmas miracle for this family right now who is just in our hearts oh. and prayers, this gorgeous, vibrant young woman. And it just makes you think how many other scenarios like this, I know some of these lawsuits fly under the radar. I read more of them sure. than I know make the news. And, and how can we prevent, and I don't want to say it's just young people, really anyone from learning what you need to know before you make a decision mm -hmm. to undergo any kind of elective plastic surgery. You talk about this plastic surgery, Wendy, but there are millions of people who undergo all types right. of uh, plastic surgery. What went wrong in, in this one? Because you typically, I know you say you read more about these, yes. but this typically doesn't happen, does it? Well, you hope not, because there's a standard of care in the industry. And you know, that's that's really always what the, the doctors and the hospitals come back with, is there was nothing that was done that wasn't according to protocol. This was a, a one-off. This was certainly nothing that could have been predicted. We did everything right. But sometimes it takes a lawsuit to expose some of those claims, and that appears to be the case here. Also remember, sometimes litigation leads to legislation in terms of new True. laws and how can we better regulate an industry like this. But let me just give a couple tips for, for our viewers. I mean, on the front end, you want to do as much research as humanly possible. You may know 10 people that went to a particular clinic to have some type of a surgery done. Do your own research. Especially important to know who's doing the anesthesiology. Yep. Yep. That appears to be, so it's ironically, the biggest risk is not the procedure itself, but in the putting somebody under and preparing them and for the And sometimes they contract out for the anesthesiologist at a clinic that yes. you trust the clinic, you trust the doctor, but the anesthesi anesthesiologist could be a person that doesn't necessarily work there all the time. That's right. So the more you can learn on the front end, knowledge is power yeah. when it comes to making some of these very, very important decisions. So what specifically does the lawsuit entail? And the lawsuit negligence alleges, or what? That's right. So as you know, having gone to law school, albeit briefly, both For my of week you, and a half, yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, it, it's usually negligence right. when you have something that goes so terribly wrong. And, and part of the lawsuit involves this 15 minute period where there was cardiac arrest. She wasn't oh. being monitored. There was apparently a delay before the before the um, 911 was finally called. But of course, that's one side of the story. Yeah. And what we'll now learn as a lawsuit moves forward is the other side is is you know what did the hospital do what what kind of procedures could have been used that weren't as we move through lawsuits like this we can only hope we continue to improve these procedures because there's about 400,000 yeah. uh, in the US every year frankly i would have thought the the figure was was more than that for anybody watching right now cuz they go through this you see all this little fine print yes. on anything really medical that you get involved in what would be the takeaway in the lesson bring out your magnifying glass and read it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like those drug commercials we see on TV where they show somebody in a, a, you know, riding a bike or skateboarding and there's all this text and, and narration about everything that can go yeah. wrong. Know what can go wrong, know the risk factors that anesthesia may, uh, may be susceptible to, know all that on the front end. And you know, there's, it's never a bad idea to rethink, sure. do you really need this yeah. elective surgery? So need, many yeah. people that undergo right. it are so beautiful anyway. Because there's such an inherent risk with any surgery, a possibility That's that things true. went wrong. And, and we live in a society where there's yeah. such a drive to be perfect. Yeah. Maybe it's a conversation with friends and family yeah. that maybe a case like this sort of spurs that conversation before somebody else makes that decision. It's tragic all around. Uh, it is. Okay. I hate to end like that on Christmas, so let's sure. pray for a Christmas yes. miracle for this young lady, this gorgeous young woman and her family. Indeed. Uh, Wendy Patrick, thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas, happy holidays to you, you and your family. Coming up.